It's time to wrap up gadgets for now. One last thing I want to do before we move on is put our gadgets or an indicator of our gadgets onto the HUD. We're going to be relying heavily on our base gadget class. So we're going to actually start in there because the first thing we need to represent our gadget is to give each gadget a name. So over to variables, hit the plus sign, call this gadget name. Click the drop down, and we're going to make this a text variable. Compile and save. Our version of a gadget not being equipped or a gadget slot being empty is actually going to be the base gadget. So that means the name for our gadget base will be empty. With that default value set, we compile and we save. I'm going to drag gadget base over here. Back over to test, you can see here that this little star indicates that we need to save our new gadgets because they've had a variable added to them. So every change we make to gadget base happens here. We don't have to add a name to every individual one. And I'm sure I've said that in an earlier video when we were doing weapons. Let's start with what we started with, which was the flashlight. And inside of flashlight, class defaults, if you can't see anything on this right panel. Here it says empty because that was the default value we set for our base gadget. But now we can change it for each individual child class. So this will be flashlight. Hitting enter on that, we can compile and save. And over to our compass. Gadget name will be compass. Compile and save. And finally, the jetpack. Jetpack, enter, compile, and save. There's step one done. Now we can refer to those names inside of our user interface. So pop down to user interface and open up HUD underscore player. Let's start with a horizontal box. If you can't find what you want here, you can just type it in in the search engine. There is horizontal box. And with horizontal box, I'm going to anchor it to the bottom. I'm going to set its alignment to 0.5 and 0.5 so that I'm actually dealing with the center of the box. I'm going to start out with a position of zero and zero, but obviously I don't want that cutting into the bottom of the HUD. If you want to get a feel for a measurement, you're not quite sure what number you want. You can actually drag on this arrow over here up and down, and that will move the position for you. So we want a negative value to go up. I think 50 will do it. Minus 50 for me. Using the right mouse button to drag and drop around the actual HUD and the scroll wheel to zoom in. I'm going to actually name the horizontal box because I have two of them here now. So I don't want to get confused. I'm going to call the first horizontal box by hitting F2 ammunition HB. And I'm going to call this horizontal box gadget HB or gadgets to be more correct. Clearing the search field, I'm going to grab four text values. And as I drag them in, I'm going to just give them a placeholder name. Gadget slot one, drag another one in. We'll call this gadget slot two and another. gadget slot three and we'll zoom out so they're on screen and finally gadget slot four now obviously this is looking quite ugly at the moment so we're going to go back to our gadget horizontal box and hit size to content which will center everything now, I definitely don't want them to blend into each other like that. So to fix that up, I'm going to get a spacer. A spacer is exactly what it sounds like. It's just going to create a space between whatever you put it in. So in a horizontal box, it's going to make a horizontal space. In a vertical box, it would make a vertical space. The value or how much space you put is done here in the size. So because this is a horizontal value, I'm going to add to the X coordinate. I'm going to give it about 25. I'm just holding control, pressing C, copying that as I normally would and pasting right back 
onto it without clicking off anywhere else, which is just going to give me one more spacer. And finally, one more time. Just going to slip that space in there. Not that it's going to matter because now we're going to tie these values over to our actual gadgets. So clicking on gadget slot one, I'm going to click on the text and click create binding. With this binding, I'm going to name it get gadget slot one. For this, I'm going to need a hero reference. With that hero reference, I'm going to get gadget slot one. Then I'm going to get child actor. Then I'm going to cast to gadget base. And then from gadget base, I'm going to get gadget name, which will populate the text here. Plugging that executable in there. And now all we need to do is repeat the same process for every other gadget slot. Back over to the designer, click gadget slot two, create binding. Back over here, I can copy this entire field. I'm going to name this, get gadget name two, because we're going to need some other functions I've just remembered. So let's change this to get gadget name opening up that again. These are just opening in tabs here within the widget editor. Pasting that down. Back to the designer, gadget slot three, create binding, get gadget name three. And back to the designer, create binding, get gadget name four. And now the only thing we need to change between all of these scripts is the gadget slot reference. So I'm going to go back to gadget slot one, which is right here, or gadget name one, I should say. You can also just double click these if you're not sure, if you can't read the entire title here because there's too many tabs open. So here, gadget slot one should line up with gadget name one, double clicking gadget name two, and we need to change this to get gadget slot two, double clicking on get gadget name three, get gadget slot three, and double clicking on get gadget name four, get gadget slot four. Compile and save. Let's pop over to test and hit play. And you can see down the bottom, flashlight, compass, jetpack, and empty. Because we have the flashlight in our first slot, compass in our second, jetpack in our third, and gadget base, thus empty in gadget slot four. Now, one more thing I wouldn't mind doing is having an indicator for whether the gadget is active or not, because sometimes gadgets won't be obviously active. For example, the flashlight might not be obvious on a bright day. And I think it makes the UI more responsive if when a gadget is active, you can see that represented. So to do this, we're going to go back to HUD player and we're going to use another cool little thing inside of the widget editor. It's called a border. We're going to add a border to every single one of these gadget slot texts. So click on text instead of dragging and dropping and trying to drag these over and line them up, which can be a bit finicky. We're just going to right click on text gadget slot one and wrap with border, which you can see the border just kicks in straight away with that color. We obviously don't want to completely black that out. So selecting the border here. And if I select the drop down here, not under tint, but brush color, this is the color that we're actually seeing here. We can see a value of one in red, green, and blue, giving us the white and the alpha. So we can see what's going on. 
we're going to drop this down to 0.5 for the alpha. So we can see the brush color, but we can also see the gadget name. Now the color I'm going to pick is just going to be green. You can make this any color you want. So I'm just gonna zero out on red and zero out on blue, which is going to give me this green. So this is the color I want to use. And I'm only using this for a reference for the moment because I'm going to bind this the same as we did with the names. So click the drop down and click create binding. This is going to create a brush color binding instead of a text binding. So the method is going to be pretty much the same. Double clicking on gadget name one, we're going to get all of this casting behavior here and copy that over. Then back over in get brush color zero, let's rename that to get gadget active one. And double clicking on that, let's paste in our gadget slot one casting. Now, once that's plugged in, we're going to get from our gadget base is gadget active. And this is going to determine what color we set. From here, I'm going to pull out of the return value and type in select. So now we can select between two options and how we switch between the two options, we plug our is gadget active, which is a Boolean into the index. The index will automatically then change to a false and a true. Now on false, I'm going to want zero on this alpha. But if this is true, I'm going to refer back to what I made in the designer, which was one on green and 0 0.5 on the alpha. With that plugged in, this script is ready to go and we can actually copy this over and create our other bindings. So selecting gadget slot two, right clicking, wrap with border. You could name these borders if you wanted to, so you can tell the difference on brush color, create binding, rename to get gadget active two, paste that in and plug in the return value into the return node. And now we just need to change get gadget slot two. And that's ready to go. Remember to make sure that you select the border because when you were wrapping something, it will automatically select what you originally had being the text of gadget slot three. So remember to select the border before looking for brush color under appearance. And also remember that you are looking specifically for the brush color, not the brush. And with all that done, compiling and saving. One last thing before we test, select the borders here, holding control and selecting all of them. Because all the borders share the same properties, this means that we can change all of the properties together. So here, I want to change the brush color to zero and red and zero and blue, and then 0 0.5 on the alpha, so that I can see what's going on when I'm looking at this HUD. Even though the HUD is not active and not doing anything inside the game engine, I have a clear representation of how it's meant to function. With that done, compile, save, over to test, hit play. And now when I hit one on flashlight, you can see that the flashlight text is now green. Same with the compass, jetpack, and pressing four will do nothing because the slot is empty. But when we do put a gadget in there, eventually it will function as intended. And that'll do for this episode. <laughs>